and jets of innocent civilians that that bombing is causing. And then to have a serious discussion or a negotiation on the way forward. But Russia's not doing that. It's continuing its offensive, and that is, that is very troubling. Let's see, speaking away from the European and further diplomatic developments, um, which should be called the Canada and the U.S. Around the risk of spelling, uh, or has it spelled, 12 Russian diplomats of these applications in New York, uh, it's uh, over concern about national security um, and uh, describe them as self uh, spies who abuse their privileges. This is news out. Rolling around on a plane map, it could be left. 
a great technical schema that you particularly have. That's not right near the Russian border. Let of the children as soon as the town came under attack. Her 14 year old son had to drive them. Her mother has just arrived at the shelter with news that key spots along the way have fallen to Russian forces. When I asked Natalia how she's coping, her eyes filled with tears. I try to keep it together, she tells me, because I don't want my children to see me cry. But she says she's still in shock that this war is even happening and angry as Vladimir Putin. By burning down our house within our land? I asked if she feels safer now in the car. For now, yes, it's calm here. But my heart is shattered. My family has been pulled apart. And I'm frightened for my children. I just really want this to end. It's a nightmare. The danger is following her. As we finished speaking, an air raid siren wailed across the park for the first time. And a whole city of adults and children and their pets were driven underground. So what can the West do to try to put the pressure on Russia, given that no country said that it's willing to join Ukraine's fight directly by sending its troops onto the battlefield? Well, it does seem to be a real financial squeeze. The currency the ruble has been hammered, according to a record low. Russia has produced a full asset freeze on all Russian banks within days, and central banks around the world have been to an unexpected and powerful move. Certainly unprecedented approach in a economy like Russia, freezing its foreign currency reserves. William Jackson is chief economist for emerging markets with capital economics, so macroeconomic consultant and research for the what does this mean? Potential for me, Russia's economy. Yeah, I think that the more it's going to turn around for the weekend to agree on these new sanctions were all quite dramatic and took many people by surprise in how aggressive they are and how they are really holding in on this type of the elements that make Russia's balance sheet look so strong. In particular, they've targeted the central bank's foreign exchange reserves, so it's close to two thousand trillion trillion dollars of these reserves. The key point is that as the premium that had a really strong effect on from Russia today, we've seen the currency fall by about 20 to 25 percent against the dollar, and the central bank has been limited in its ability to stop the currency falling for intervening in the foreign exchange market. Does it have other equity or other things that it can call upon? Gold, for example, or reserves with China. It does. The problem is that these are perhaps not so sophisticated as other types of foreign exchange. The world is very uh, difficult to, to use in those types of circumstances if customers of Russian banks are unable to afford uh, dollars and cash. You can't replace it. You can't give them gold and stuff. One of the other things that I was struck by today was the Swiss government announcing that it was going to adopt the same sanctions as the European Union. Which just, I don't know how significant it is in economic or financial terms, particularly in terms of you know, those oligarchs who maybe uh, have uh, decided to stow their money in, in Swiss banks. But it does seem symbolically quite important given Switzerland's history of neutrality and, and banking secrecy. What, what did you read into it? It felt like a very big move from Switzerland. The Swiss government probably did a lot to be clear. Russia. We're talking on a very macroeconomic level at the moment. I wonder at what point we are likely to see all this feed into a squeeze on the Russian consumer, on, in, on inflation, on uh, mortgages. When do you think this is likely to be felt on the Russian street? I think it's going to be felt very soon. I think it's quite likely that this inflation will jump to 15 to 20 percent. Very big rise is going to really shake the household's income. At the same time, early this morning, the central bank raised interest rates from five and a half percent to twenty percent. I think this is going to start hurting consumers quite quickly. William, we began this interview by you remarking on just how concerted and strong these sanctions have been on Russia. One sector that has escaped um, and clearly it's because Europe in particular relies so much upon imports from Russia is the energy sector and oil and gas. How much can Russia do you think can 
continue to rely on, on that as a source of income and also perhaps as a, as a means of leverage over the West. Yeah, this is, this is really the area that's being carved out in all the sanctions is the energy trade because, as you say, Europe, European countries are very dependent on, on Russian gas. That being said, there's clearly a, there's kind of been a shift by European governments towards recognizing that they need to reduce their dependence on, on Russian energy and to stop Russia being able to leverage, uh, to use this as leverage. Markets for capital economics. You're listening to news now. This is the BBC World Service, where we're looking at human nature. I'm Dutton, the host of DC Human, a guided tour to the wilderness inside your head, an investigation of human instincts, culture, and biology to find out why we do what we do. This week's samples, from rain dances, to rain, why our bodies react to rhythm. You will experience the point where you just completely leave your body. It's like I'm at another location in the room, and then I'm watching myself dance. Why does music move us? I moved a little easier for him. I kind of felt a little lighter. Dance is both therapy and a way to elevate my spirits. I'm looking at the neuroscience of music and movement. The connections in our brain to synchronize their firing to meet the beat when we move. We tend to connect to the sounds and to the vibrations. The Bleachman at PBC World on music. In the next 30 minutes, we'll get the latest from here. Correspondent Lisa Dutch here from a resident in the city of Kharkiv under renewed Russian bombardment. That's what the shift in hardening of Russian military tactics could mean. Get the stories of those who've been forced to flee abroad. The young Ukrainian man who says he has decided to take up arms in the comfortable Soviet Union. BBC News with Chris Barrett. Ukraine has accused Russia of bombarding residential districts in the country's second largest city, Kharkiv, killing at least 11 people and injuring dozens. The regional governor said there were no military targets in the area under attack and called it a war crime. Kharkiv remains under Ukrainian control. The prosecutor at the International Criminal Court in The Hague has told him that opening an investigation into potential war crimes in Ukraine. Korean cars have this could look into alleged atrocities during the current fighting. At the United Nations in New York, an emergency session of the General Assembly has heard calls for an immediate ceasefire in Ukraine. The UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, said it was chilling that Russia's nuclear forces had been placed on high alert. The United States says it expels 12 UN diplomats from Russia because of concerns about national security. They were described as intelligence operatives who'd abused their privileges. The oil giant Shell is quitting all of its operations in Russia. These included stake in the flagship liquefied natural gas plants and its involvement in the North Sea 2 gas pipeline entering Russia's future. All of Russia's national and club football teams have been suspended from international competitions by FIFA and UEFA. The national side has been due to take part in World Cup playoffs next month. In other news, Sudanese security forces have opened fire and used tear gas in a bid to disperse large crowds of protesters calling for an end to military rule. More than 80 people have been killed since the coup last October. And President Joe Biden has sent a delegation of some deterrents and security officials to Taiwan to give reassurance of continued U.S. support for the island. Taiwan has said it's wary of China taking advantage of a distracted West to move against it. BBC News. Coming up shortly, we'll hear from Kiev and uh, Ukraine's second city, Kharkiv, which has faced a particularly intense barrage from Russian forces close to there. Let's have a quick look now at another big story today. A major UN report on climate change. UN Secretary General Antony Guterres called it an ashless of human suffering where the abdication of leadership is criminal. Professor Daniel Schmidt was the coordinating leader of the report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. I think it's really important to hear those messages that climate change effects are there. Climate change is not for the future. I think it's also important in the 